Hello, I'm Solomon. Um, Richard, uh, I guess I'll say your name. It's right there on the screen, but yeah. that's Richard. Thanks for tuning in today. We're uh, just going to go over a, a package that I've been developing. Um, it's called Package Developer. And Richard's here as a, as a wingman. Person. <laughs> yeah, right. A person who speaks Python. He's going to jump in. Uh, he's never really seen this before. First time seeing it in action. Yeah, excited to see what's yeah. going on. One annoying thing about writing modules and sort of the development process itself is constantly tweaking things because I, I certainly don't, I don't get anything right the first time. I think anybody who develops can agree with that sentiment. Um, so I, I want to develop a, a, what's that? Anyone who's honest and write code. That's right. Writes maybe code. A, maybe a, someone who's not good at interviewing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll say that. Um, so the, the, the what I'm developing here was was a method to basically develop a module. I'm developing a method to develop a module. Um, and the, the key things that are required from this module that develops modules is I never want to open a script. I never want to open a script file. So I want to be developing these, these modules without just from whatever environment I'm working in. Um, uh, and so it needs to, the end result needs to be a sourceable module that I can you know, close my environment, open a new environment, and import the created module. Um, uh, and, and like I said, opening and closing and opening and closing and reimporting, that's the nuisance I'm trying to get rid of here. So um, small or large tweaks throughout the development process need to be able to be tweaked effortlessly without, again, without ever opening that sourceable module um, file. Um, and then when you're tweaking a module that you're developing, you know, you want to test tweaks that you're making, right? So, and that's what, that's what typically causes the most headache is because when I make a tweak to something I'm developing, those tweaks are also wrong five times before they're right. So I'm, in the old style, I'm changing the, the source file, re-importing that source file with after I've tweaked it, uh, testing that tweak, realizing, oh, I didn't do that right. Going back, resaving, tweaking, resaving, re-importing, doing that five times over again. Times that, multiply that by 200 tweaks for a module and a development process, and you end up with a lot of opening, closing, and saving, and it's a headache. Um, so this package developer module gets rid of that. This is the first time I've seen it. It's a hot swap for the modules. Uh, yeah, let's, let's jump into that. I probably, I've probably um, rambled on here a bit about the why. So um, I the way it works is, let me pull up. Maybe I'll pull up the module itself. So different versions of it. But this, and I'll give a shout out to Richard right here. Um, these little ANSI headings here is, is a functionality that I've included, I've, I've included as well. You have um, a link the, to the to text I, cool I can put it in the in comments. The comments. Uh, I'll also I think you should give those text. guys a shout out. Yeah, right. I'll link to text cool in the Jupyter notebook that I'll share along with this. Um, this in particular is not done by that link because this is actually done by the package developer module. Um, so uh, it's done by some other Python package. Um, Probably here, yeah. It's this Pi Figlet here. Um, so here's here's the the module itself. Um, it's long, <laughs> um, and what it does is it it has it's pointed at a directory that I've called development module. I'll make this a little bigger. Um, inside this directory is any module that it can basically develop or tweak or bind to that final file. Well. That's the final file of the package developer module, which it, it can develop itself, but can also point at some other file. That would be importable. So um, these are, these are not importable files here. These are what I call the the nested directory. Um, I call them development mods. Uh, I'll reference a nested directory structure quite a bit, but these are where everything is stored temporarily. That then gets binded or bound into that final source code module. I uh, will go over that with an example here shortly. But um, so at a high level, the, inside develop mod, you have packages, uh, which inside each package, you have classes, you have function groups. Uh, and these function groups contain functions. 
which are, they're all just text files. These are just the source code for that particular function, right? Or that particular module inside a class will have module groups instead, or method groups, I'm sorry. Uh, and we'll have some attributes as well. So here's a method. Um, that's the text for that method. These are not in source, but these are just, these are just text files, nothing more. So it's say you'll you write methods in your write functions or methods into your environment. You'll bind those methods with a, a function call of the package developer module, and those will uh, tweak those nested directory structures as files, which are code. And then at the end, when you're satisfied with everything, you can just call the bind function, bind method, and that will create that source file that will be importable. Uh, one key thing here is that you have to be able to test. So your your working environment needs to stay the same as the environment of that future source code module. Um, so what it does is it, it writes all of the Python code to a file structure and then traverses right. the file structure and reloads it back into memory. Uh, it doesn't traverse the file structure. And the only time it traverses the file structure is to search for a particular method that I need uh, uh, called git method upon. It'll just give me the text for that method so I can tweak it and then recommit it. So I'll do that just for one particular method in your in sort of your your work your work and your development work. Um, what it, so how it keeps your environment the same is um, I pull back up this. Um, it has a way to so I point I give it I give it a, a reference to. The global dic direct the global dictionary of the environment that I'm working in, and then it's able to set attributes for anything in that global dictionary. Um, and it has it has a function called instances. So I can it uses this. I mean, it uses this under the hood. It, it searches my global direct global dictionary of the environment that I'm working in finds any instances of the class that it's developing and sets attributes to that class of the function that it makes and needs well it's a little bit more complicated than that because you know the, the module exists in a different namespace than the working environment so it needs to um define that function or method in the namespace of the module and then commit module to the namespace of the other directory. So it's a bit com complicated, but uh, it works. This is actually just slightly cleaned up from um, my first sort of test after I felt like everything was stable enough to develop a module start to finish. Uh, so this it was probably about an hour and a half to develop this module that I'm going to develop now in front of you, kind of artificially. Um, uh, but that hour and a half you know, includes like learning how to use the Selenium package and learning how to do headless browsing and stuff like that. A lot of Googling, right? So um, I think uh, developing a simple module, developing it's something you know what to, what's going to take the time is you learning what you want to do. It's not going to be you manipulating anything, right? So um, the, the, the idea I had to develop this module was uh, in a lot of my work, I'm I use some some print functions to some like color coding and bolding to just highlight things I'm looking for. So I'm, I'm looking for a data, looking through a database, and it's got a whole bunch of stuff, and I want to find all the things that have some particular phrase in it. So I'll do some matching functions and color those a different way. Uh, I just kind of copied that from somebody off, uh, off somewhere online. <laughs> you can find it just by googling easily, but. Uh, the default colors are really pretty ugly if you just like use standard available colors. So I thought maybe I'd develop a way to. Uh, the thought was let's go to a website, uh, and they have some you know they have paid a lot of people to develop color schemes and themes right for that website. So I thought let's go to the website, scrape down the x number of most prevalent prevalent colors, and use those colors in like custom print. Um, as the print functionality, something. So that's what I want to develop here. Um, the end result of this, like I said, is going to be a sourceable module. Uh, it will end up here in the sourceable modules directory, which is where this object is going to save all of its sourceable modules. Um, the module will be called 
um, company themes. But if we look very quickly here, it's not here yet. Um, it was, but I've deleted it. I, I've said this is a somewhat artificial, but I think it just gets gets the gist of things. Um, so first thing we need to do, of course, is import package developer, which is the module I'm developing. Um, and I'm going to import the class developer object that defines something in my environment. Um, so this is some arguments here. Like I said, we're not going to get too far in the weeds, but this is just in, initiating an instance of class developer object. Uh, when I give it a string, it needs to be that it knows it's going to develop a new module. If this was an existing module that you're tweaking, you would import that existing class or module, and you would point it directly. This first argument would not be a string; it would be the the, the reference, the alias for that module itself, class object. Um, and then you need to share with it your globals environment. Um, that's uh, I'll say I've heard that that's not always wise. You can share with it some portion of your global's environment if you if you like to be more secure, because uh, this module will have access to anything in your global's environment um, when you do that. Um, all right, so it basically uh, has created a sort of a default nothing module now. So open this up, and there's nothing in here. This is a it's technically an importable module. There's nothing in here. It just has. This is just the default setup. The only thing it has in here is this custom format class, which has nothing in it either. It's just an empty class. All right, so that's what we're messing with. We've now created a class. Uh, we've created a module, created a class. We need to figure out how to save an image of the home page of whatever we want to go to. Uh, so Google Selenium, Google how to do that basically, and then just messing around. This is just messing around with Google and stuff. How to take the screenshot and extract the colors of the home page of whatever arbitrary website. Uh, we haven't done anything with package developer yet. Again, just messing around. So th this is sort of the first step where, where the package developer object comes in. in, in mind. So I figured out how to use Selenium to go to whatever website you want to go to. Screenshot the home page and extract some colors. So now I need to develop a, f a method function, a method to do that in the module that we're going to use in the future. So messed around a bunch, wrote these two things, the method to screenshot the home page. All right, so this is where package developer comes into play. So we've defined these two functions which will later be methods into our working environment. And then when I call CD, which is our pack class developer object, um, when I call cd.commit method, feed it the function that wants to become the method I'm going to commit, it's going to do something with that. It's going to search for any instances of its target class, which in this case is the company themes dot custom form. What's happened now, we've... Um, We've written three methods to this object. Um, our source mode file is not going to be changed yet. It's still empty, completely empty. We haven't done anything with that. But what's what's being changed is we're both we're setting attributes to that object in our environment, and we're uh, messing with this nested directory structure here. So this is a new folder as of 8.43. It's right now 8.44. Uh, and then every function that we converted to a method is now saved as a dot method file, which is again, it's just a text file. And this is the code that will later be um, converted into that sourceable file. So messing with our working environment, messing with these nested directory structures. And then the other thing you have to keep in mind when you're when you're dealing with different namespaces and developing a module is, you know, there's things that I've imported into my environment that are not going to be in the working in the future sourceable module unless I put them there. So there's another method here to add module imports, which is going to be things that will need to be available in the future to this um, sourceable module. So now we're going to test the thing that we've the thing that we are developing, right? So I'm going to call I'm going to instantiate just to find the init method. So now I'm going to instantiate an instance of uh, the custom format object. 
I was in our environment. I haven't defined custom format anywhere except for when I instantiated um, my class developer object. It went ahead and inserted custom format into my environment. This is a class. As an empty class that was later added things to it. So now we have this custom format class in our environment. I'm gonna, I work for Geico, uh, if you haven't noticed. So <laughs> I just happen to call it Geico. We can call it something else if you want. Call it Geico format. It's going to open a browser here. We're to close this one. So if you remember, I'm gonna scrape that. It'll save you a fistful of dollars. What's that? Ah, is that the, I don't watch their commercials. That must be one of the commercials. Uh, and this is nothing to do with my class. It's just me testing out the colors that we've scraped. You can see those are pretty Geico colors. I'll zoom in here so you can get a good view of whatever Geico's marketing team thinks are good colors. So that and that's a much better color scheme than the the default red, blue, green values that you you'd get in a. All right. So uh, the next thing is so the next thing I want to highlight is tweaking tweaking methods. You want to do a lot. So I had previously defined this method print colors. I committed that method. Uh, I decided uh, it's not quite what I want, so I don't know what's different here. Yeah, so I print color plus text, and what ended up happening is it never ended that format. So the next thing you printed would also be in that color. So I had to tweak that method. So I'll call this get method function or get method method. Tell it which method I want to get, and it searches, scales those nested directory structures, finds something called print colors dot method, and prints it out. So then I just highlight that Control C Control V here change it however I want, and recommit it as something else. And now it's different. That's different in the nested directory structures, and it's different in any instance of the class or the class itself in our our working namespace. If you do the Wells Fargo, you should get a reddish and then a gold color. Make the yeah, 49ers see. colors. Wells Fargo. I don't know how we call it. Wells Fargo. <laughs> Did we did we do Wells Fargo? We didn't do Wells Fargo. Did we not run that one at all? Yeah, we have Wells Fargo format. Do that. Yeah, those first two are definitely on brand. Yeah, it's about something wrong. There's those are the Wells Fargo that we scraped. So red, yellow, purple, blue, and brown. Uh, it's not a perfect science, right? Sometimes some websites just have this giant image of like a mountainside or something, and you just get a whole bunch of browns and greens when it's like something that you would think of as, you know, bright blue or something. Um, start to breeze through a little bit here. Um, more functions. Those aren't really important for the package developer. They're important for custom format, but we're talking about package. Let me skip over these next two things. Get method print colors. Again, we're going to change print colors method. Let's just get the method, tweak it, recommit. Real easy. So we've created our... We've, def we've written some functions, we've committed those functions to nested directories, and now we're going to bind this final sourceable module. So if we go back to our sort of our default sourceable module that was created when we instantiated the class itself, um, it is a sourceable module, but it's empty. Can we, uh, can we run it, or can you run it with uh, the file structure? Yeah. Open on the right um, side of the screen. File structure on the right side of the screen. Yeah, Windows Explorer, so we can see it writing stuff in real time. Um, um, like that? Yeah, maybe. Let's see. I don't know how how frequently this will refresh. Um, and you haven't executed yet? the CD bind yet, have you? Not yet. No. So we'll see what it does. But I think, if I remember right, I think it makes one long module, which may be a, a problem. In, and larger modules, but it's not really a, like a stream writing. It's makes all the text and then writes it all at once. Yeah, that's fine. We'll see what happens. Ready? Yeah. There go. Yeah, it says it's done, so we didn't see anything happen. <laughs> it did. Right. There it goes. So that's the awesome portable module, right? So yeah, uh, you know, uh, and I think I gave you kudos, but I'll give you kudos again for pointing me to Text Cool, which we will include <laughs> a link to um, in the description. Yeah, yeah, this is very useful. Um, I'm not using it directly, but I'm using 
something else, which is there somewhere. But it's not in the module that we're developing, so it's not showing. Well, you can link that one. I think that, yeah, I'll link that. Uh, um, yeah, so we have you know, a nice importable module. We'll import it here in a second, but you have your module imports, module attributes, module functions, custom format. Uh, there's one more uh, level of grouping that I like. It's absolutely not necessary, but I like my modules to be somewhat organized so I can look at them. And they look pretty. Um, yeah, so I want to add some method groups. So that's another sort of just an organizational structure that we have on top of this as well. That's um, useful. About, so it's telling you all the functions that exist in the source files within that folder structure. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to take those. I'm going to do this method called add method group, create a method group called browsing. And inside that, I'm going to put all of these. So group name and then methods to include. So I'm going to make two method groups, one called browsing with screenshot and homepage. Prints out way too much there. I'll get rid of that at some point. Another one called formatting. And then we're going to rebind this file and it will do something else. Let's see it. Um, there we go. So now rebound. Now within our custom format larger heading, go down here and we'll see a smaller browsing method group. Nice. We have some browsing and then some formatting groups and then it's done. So that should be an importable file. I'm going to close this out and I'm going to open a new environment, a new kernel, a new whatever you want to call it. And now we should be able to write from company themes import custom. So that should be importable. And now I'll just say locals. Um, so you can either give this a URL or you can give it something. I'm probably going to spell your company wrong. Uh, Richard works for key wit or key weight or how do you spell your company at, T, at the end I like that eh? there you go all right so let's see if that works see if we can get cool five colors from the home page key wit all right there's your black and charcoal unless it's filtered out and then yellow yeah we will filter out pure grayscale but it, if it's like a mostly black to the human but technically has some green in it or something yeah. okay so perfectly grayscale is filtered we're going to All right. All right. So we found five colors. Um, let's do F. Uh, I don't know if I remember the. It's F. Uh, I don't know if it's set text. No, F. Uh, text. Next. And yeah, we'll say we are finished. All right. We'll do. Print, I think. And those are the colors we found: brown, brown, yellow, brown, brown, another brown, oh, brown. For the first one, it's all um, from photos. Yeah, that's probably yeah, that's an issue. But hey, that's uh, it's a close, close. Pick another website if you don't like the ones with photos. Pick one without photos. Yeah, let's do a website for our favorite brand, which would be Fisker. I'm going to get you the web address. F-I-S-K-E-R. It's um, an electric car company. Is it Fisker.com or is it something else? Well, you see, it might have a different FiskerInc.com. But you know what? That's all photos in black and white. So let's try <laughs> something else. All right. uh, let's do, um, let's try Google. Oh, yeah. They have some pretty yeah. salient color schemes. Yeah, we'll get good colors from that. We'll give your script uh, an easy one. Yeah, if it can't find five colors on Google's <laughs> Google dot com, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. There we go. Those one, are Google's two, colors. Three, four, five. Yeah, very nice. There we go. So that's finished. Imported a module. One uh, last thing that jumped out at me when you printed the method names is this could be really useful for generating documentation. Is there a way that you could print out the the um, the function names and then also the parameters? I know this is an unscripted question. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, 
Well, let, let, let's let's put it to the test. We can cut whatever the, uh, part of this doesn't work out. <laughs> or, well, we can just leave it in too. Yeah. But um, <laughs> so you were trying to tweak uh, functionality of the class developer object here. So we're going to do some circular development here. Point it at itself. Need to do that otherwise. All right. None of that matters. We have this class developer object, and we want to. What do we want to do? We want to. We want to yeah, sort of do something each. similar to. We want to generate basically a, a table of contents for the API documentation. So we'd like the it to print out each function name and then the the parameters for each function. Yeah. So what we could do is we could define another function called I don't know. Get documentation. Get method name. And we'll use this inside of like a document method name, something that stores it somewhere, right? Perfect. First step, first step, I think, would just be get get what we want to store. Yeah. So we're going to find get method name, and then it'll be whatever the method name is, <laughs> right? Um, and that's going to do just to be a method called self here at the beginning. So the text that we want to get is going to be um, method. We could do the same thing with functions, but um, get method method. Mm -hmm. Not very good at typing here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to split that. And we're going to take the first line. And we're going to just return the text for now. Let's see what happens. All right, so now we can commit that. And um, now that should exist in the class developer object. So now we can get method name, self that gets self that get method name. Make sure I'm not typing everything wrong here. And then we can get the method name for whatever we want. I'll just get it for instance, right? Get method name for instances. And it's printed out what I didn't want it to print out because get method prints it out. Um, get method doesn't return anything. It just prints it out. So um, return text is an argument in get method. We need to set that to true for it to return. We set print false. I think there's a great example of big stuff, right? Yeah, it's a it was true. practical use case. I think that was spelled true. Um, print method. So now do and try that again. And now we've gotten the first line of that. Um, I really don't want all that. I just want the second word and on. So I'm going to do Next, split. We're going to take the uh, second word and on and return text. Um, it was text um, that did not work. Sure, it did. Hmm? Now we just need to add. Ah, I need to join. The parentheses. I want to join that. There we go. It's the function instances, and we have the arguments with the default values. So that might be a line we'd want to log somewhere, right? Perfect. So yeah. Kind of what we're talking about. And then we could divide another function to write that. To so loop through all of the functions in your module. Yeah. So we would just want to make some file. Um, let me see. What's all in here? Just to refresh my memory. So there's a bunch of directories. Uh, there's a bunch of paths. We're going to want to add something to. Um, I think uh, you. It, it would be the same function that you wrote in the last tab. We went over it during the earlier part of the meeting. 
And then we, it, you could just swap the function call from get method name to get method or whatever the one you just wrote. So that's the new one, right? And then you had get method. There you go. Yeah. So you had a, a for loop in the last Jupyter notebook that we were going through. It was towards the very end. Yeah, there you go. So I think we could just replace this with. Yeah, we can do that inside of a function, but we're going to want to write it to some file, right? Uh, I thought we could copy and paste, but if you want to write it to a file, we can add that functionality later. Uh, yeah, let's do this for now. Copy and paste. And see what happens. Uh, well, All right, so we're going to copy that. Um, just delete that and put that. Yeah, so that's going to be all the methods. Um, yeah, we'll do this. Let's list comprehension here. So for everything for K and those methods, we're going to get method name. Okay, it's probably not the best letter for this, but we'll do. And these are the headings. Is there a better word for headings? Maybe so these are headings, is fine. headings. These are all the headings that we want to write this in files. Fabulous. Done. Yeah, and we can write another function. We'll just, let's just start working from here. Um, uh, define document headings. Then we have methods of self. We have what we want to document. We have all CD for now. It's going be. This is something that I will use regularly. You know, just uh, crawl through, crawl through the modules and find the functions. And then try to figure out who wrote them and then get them to document what what each one does or is supposed to do. Right. Well, as long as that's not me. Well, so this is the the module root is the highest level of that development mod structure for this particular module. Um, but if you have any ideas, let me know. But I'm gonna import OS. Let that show me module root. I'm gonna go this step. Save it in that. Mm. I will just save it in that module root right now. And we'll give it the name. Uh, get to the document the headings. No, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> um, I think that's short. Let's see what this if you have put close for this on it. So that's where we're going to save this file. I don't know if I think we already have OS imported in our module. So path equals that. This is going to be self. Be self. Open path. You want to write. All those lines. New line. Headers. And we're going to commit that to the method. Yeah. Mm. Making sounds. Sorry, I make sounds when I code. 
Um, all right, let's see if that works. It didn't work. Spelled something I wrong for too. sure. There we go. That'll work. Um, and now I can run it. Um, it's very, very courageous to try to write Ooh. code in real time in front of other people. All right, CD is not defined. That means we did something wrong. Uh, let's see CD in here. There it is. CD is right here. So we need to reference self instead of CD, recommit that, retry it. File doesn't exist. That's right. Doesn't exist. We need open right. Okay. And now let's see if it works. I'm sure it did. Um, go to this development mods, go to package developer.module, and we should have a file called documentheadings.txt with all of our document headings. Ah, beautiful. Here we go. I like that. Let's keep some part of that in. We can, we can trim it probably. But. Yeah. Your API is now 90% uh, complete. Very nice. And we can make that document look cleaner too, right? Maybe put some ASCII headings in there or something. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is. Not that lines of code is a good measure of anything, but how many lines do you have in the uh, entire package developer? 1869. Oh boy. Some spaces. Yep. Very nice. Well, I'm impressed. Thank you for showing us. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm glad you liked it. Um, yeah. And if anyone's watching this video and has any questions, how do they get a hold of you? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, you're a better interviewer than I am. Um, I'm definitely on LinkedIn. I'll be sharing this on LinkedIn. Um, I will put some contact information into this Jupyter notebook that will be slightly cleaned up and annotated some more and put, put a link to, you know, tech school, put a link to my, my contact information, whatever contact information you'd like to include as well. We'll be there. All right. Um, awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks a bunch. I really appreciate your time. I'll sure. Like yep. And to all Bye. you lovely listeners out there, hope you, like that too. Stay classy. <laughs> All right, cheers.